Are you pro or anti Donald Trump? We don't discuss politics. That's a, that's a pro Donald Trump. <laughs> Comedian Nimesh Patel spotted these covert Trump supporters from a mile away. We don't even discuss politics. <laughs> like, all right. Just when there's no other minorities around, it's like, then we talk politics. While this is a fantastic joke, it also serves as a major indictment of how politics are viewed in our country. To those with the least to lose, politics is just another form of entertainment that can be turned off whenever they want, which unfortunately plays a role in these attitudes prevailing. The funniest about white supremacy is that it's never a supreme white person. You know what I mean? It's never a supreme white guy. It's not Tom Brady or like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know what I mean? Highlighting the absurdity of thinking any race is better than another is a great way to combat this disgusting lie because it shows how delusional someone must be to believe themselves to be superior solely because of their skin color. And speaking of delusional. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history, you're changing culture. If you were to have dinner with Donald Trump and you could talk to him about one thing, the scariest thing that no one's talking about in this country right now, what would you say that would be to the president? Nuclear war. That word has been bounced around so loosely. I remember the 80s. I, I grew up in the 80s. And I remember seeing a movie like Threads or seeing The, the, the Day After and, and, and stuff like that, uh, where nuclear war, I mean, come on. Nuclear war is not like a conventional war. One bomb can wipe out quite a lot of, a lot of area and people. And, and people are just throwing that word around like it's nothing. This is exactly the type of person Nimesh was talking about, whether a Freudian slip or not, the fact that the term Aryan people immediately came to his mind when thinking about nuclear destruction says all you need to know about the people Trump's rhetoric and policies appeal to the most. I had a mob scene in New Orleans after the former KKK leader and current U.S. Senate candidate squeaked into a debate on a black college campus. David Duke is one of Donald Trump's biggest and least welcomed fans in Louisiana. Duke is barely getting 5% in the polls, but it was enough to get him on a debate stage and voices admiration for Donald Trump. I will be Donald Trump's most loyal advocate to make sure his nominees go to the Supreme Court. What does today represent to you? And the camera's right here. What does today represent to you? This represents a turning point for the people of this country. We are determined to take our country back. We're going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. That's what we believed in. That's why we voted for Donald Trump, because he said he's going to take our country back. The fact that David Duke said that about Trump back in 2017 um, is one, not surprising, given what he stands for, white supremacy, Ku Klux Klan. Um, but two, when you look at what Trump is doing right now in 2024, his rhetoric is even worse when it, when it comes to white supremacy, because just the other day he said he wants a MAGA majority court, right? On the Supreme court. That is terrifying. That is scary as heck. Okay. And now because he is going to be the presidential nominee, um, for, on the Republican side, the Republican Party is forced to bring in all of these alt-right and white nationalists and white supremacist groups because that is the core of his base, whether you want to believe it or not. What is it about Donald Trump that excites you? Why do you want to see him as president again? Honestly, it's the people that support him. You don't have to love Donald. You have to love the people that love Donald. Go one layer <laughs> beneath that for me so I know what you mean by that. Just real people that really care about this country, that really want the best for everyone. I mean, people that really care about their kids and the tradition of what America has been and will be, hopefully. You know, we're excited about making America great again. It's not just a hat. I look around and I see the kind of people that support Trump and are real hardcore Trump supporters. And these are people who have worked their whole lives, 
have kids that are hopefully going to end up being uh, successors to what we've been given. I, I don't know. I, I feel like we represent the, the backbone of this country. What does that hat mean to you? What does the again part of it mean? I think it's about taking what we've been given and handed down. You know, it's the old-fashioned, uh, I don't know if it was Ronald Reagan or who said it, but essentially we're always one generation away from losing freedom, right? Um, to me, it's about taking what we were given and very carefully taking care of it and handing it down to our kids. We're in a tough spot right now. There's a lot of problems. And, uh, you know, I think we need to work together. But I also don't think the solution is to compromise with people who really want to bring this country down. And I see that being a strong faction today. The progressive left is really uh, anti-American. In what way? Can you um, articulate that a little? I feel like they're, um, you know, if, if you look at what this country's original founding fathers uh, were, were trying to do, um, you know, they left the monarchies of, of, of Europe, um, the religious persecution of Europe. They came to a place where they were promised that if we worked hard and we focused on, um, you know, our families and our, and our personal spirituality, that we could, we could be a great nation. And we did that uh, for a hundred plus years. The rhetoric you heard there plays a major role in shaping the future generations, right? The minds and the beliefs of them. He talks about how they want to pass these beliefs down onto their children and get back to, you know, families who care about their kids and taking care of them, yada, yada, and how, yo, you don't have to like Donald Trump. You don't have to love Donald Trump, but you have to love the people who love him. Excuse me? What type of, what type of logic is that? that please. And then he says the founding fathers brought so much greatness to this country, essentially. Many of the founding fathers owned slaves. So what are we getting back to? Again, they use these coded messages and euphemisms to dismiss the destructive, the violent, and dangerous beliefs that they hold. And if there aren't people, a lot of people, or, or institutions or outlets to combat this nasty propaganda, these attitudes are going to continue to be passed down and centuries of white supremacy will continue. Again, his world, in that guy's mind, it's all about people who look like him. That's what they're trying to get back to. He's talking about, we did it for 100 years. We were great. Who was it great for, buddy? Because it sure, sure wasn't great for my ancestors. Sure wasn't great for Native Americans. Do I need to continue? Like, come on, bro. So I'm, I'm going to do my job and combat what's going on and these idiotic and arrogant beliefs, these arrogant systems um, that are out there and arrogant attitudes, I should say. For Rebel HQ, I'm Chris Williamson. We'll see you next time.